Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and as the title of the video suggests today we are going to cover a very very important topic in the tree data structures sub topic and as the title of the video suggests we are going to talk about what is balancing a tree and the second question that we are going to answer is why do we need it okay so two very important questions that is what is balancing in a tree data structure and why do we need it absolutely important video please make sure you watch this video till the end a lot of future videos in this course in this dsa playlist under the trees category are going to be based on this balancing concept so please understand this very thoroughly keep your distractions aside keep your cell phones on silent watch this video till the end and with that being said let's get started now we've already talked about binary tree binary search tree and how it is beneficial over the linear data structures and what not all those things are already covered i'm guessing you guys already know about it if not check out this dsa playlist in fact we also briefly talked about what is a balanced binary tree as well but i thought a separate video tutorial on this topic is very important so let's try to answer the first question of this video that is what is balancing so a binary tree is called balanced binary tree if the difference between the height of left and right subtree for every node is not more than k and usually the k is 1 okay let me again read the entire definition it's pretty basic if you break it down in different parts so a binary tree is called a balanced binary tree if the difference between the height i hope you know what is height we'll talk about it so the difference between the height of left and right subtree for every node is not more than k which is usually considered as 1 so we'll also take k equals to 1 and the height of a tree is the number of edges on the longest path between the root node and the leaf node okay so over here there are two diagrams let's say we have binary tree diagram 1 and both of them are binary search trees okay so we are more interested in binary search trees because a binary tree does not have a lot of applications but a binary search tree has many practical applications because of that property where for every node the left child will always have smaller value than that node and right child will have greater value okay so i hope you know the distinguishing factor between a regular binary tree and a binary search tree structurally both of them are binary trees only only in bst we have this extra property right so over here we have two tree diagrams both of them are binary search tree diagrams but they are also binary trees of course and over here in tree diagram 1 this is the root node n1 right so what is the height of this binary tree the height of a tree according to the definition is the number of edges on the longest path between the root node and leaf node so these yellow arrows are nothing but the edges or links and we need to find out the longest path starting from the root node till the leaf node so n4 is a leaf node n6 is a leaf node and n7 is also a leaf node right i hope you know what are leaf nodes the nodes that are there at the lower most extremities and which do not have further children are called leaf nodes so we have three leaf nodes 1 2 and 3 and out of these three we know that n7 is the furthest from n1 because we have three edges so 1 2 and three edges between root node n1 and the leaf node n7 the other two leaf nodes which is n4 has two edges you can see 1 and 2 and n6 also has two edges 1 and 2 so we need the longest path right so that is the height so your height is 3 in this tree diagram also the height is going to be 3 starting from n1 to n7 we have the longest path 1 2 and 3 so this is the calculation of height okay all right so coming back to the topic of balanced binary tree so according to the definition a binary tree or a binary search tree is balanced if the difference between the height of left subtree and right subtree for every node is not more than k which is usually 1 okay so we'll assume k equals to 1 always in our examples so let's apply this definition on these two diagrams and let's see if binary tree diagram 1 is balanced or not and we'll also see the same for binary tree diagram 2 okay all right so first things first n1 is root and for n1 which are the two subtrees when i say sub trees it means that the left and right side of that tree so for n1 
this entire portion is going to be the left subtree. I'll write LST in short for left subtree. I hope you get it. And for N1, which is the right portion, these two nodes comprise of the right subtree. Okay. So these are also smaller subtree or tree diagrams only or tree structures only. Correct. So for N1, we have this as left subtree and this as right subtree. All right. Now, what do we have to do? We've got the individual subtrees for N1. Okay. We have to do this for every node, but for N1, we found them. And now we have to find out the height of this left subtree and right subtree. So for left subtree, N2 is the root node, correct? And the height would be the longest path to a leaf node. So for N2 or for this left subtree, we have N4 as the leaf node and N7 as the leaf node. And just by observing, you can see we have two edges, one and two over here, and we have only one edge. So the longest path is this. And for this left subtree, we have the height is two, correct? So two edges, this is the height of the left subtree. Similarly for the right subtree, this is the root node and this is the leaf. We only have two nodes and there is only one edge. So the height of right subtree is one. Now we have to find out the difference because we have to see whether that difference is not more than K, which is equal to one. So now we have to calculate LST minus RST. So LST minus RST is equal to two minus one, which is equal to one. So according to the definition and according to the value that we've assumed as K equals to one, what we got is the difference as one. So one is not greater than K equals to one, right? It is equal to one, but it is not greater. So anything greater than one, then it would mean that this tree diagram is not balanced. But since we've got the value one, that is difference one. So far, we can say that this binary search tree is balanced, right? So that is what we did. We found out the difference between the height of left and right subtree. But now you can see we also have to do that for every node. So what we did is we just calculated this entire calculation for node N1. That is for the root node because for root node we had LST and RST. Similarly, we also have to do this entire process for N2, entire process for N3, entire process of N4, entire process for N5, N6 and N7. So what do I mean by the entire process? It means that I have to calculate the left subtree height and right subtree height for N2 also. So for N2, what is the left subtree? This is the left subtree. And for the node N2, this is the right subtree, correct? So left subtree and right subtree. So for left subtree, what is the height? We have only one node in the left subtree N4. So there are no edges. So height is going to be zero. Correct. There is no edges only. We have only one node in this left subtree. In the right subtree, we have two nodes N5 and N7. So N5 would be the root node. We have one edge, which is equal to one. So now LST minus RST would be equal to zero minus one, which is equal to minus one. And of course, height cannot be negative. So we remove the minus one sign. So we again get the value of one. So again, one is not greater than K equals to one. Correct. We are assuming K equals to one. So it is equal. So it is not greater. So still we can see that this binary tree is balanced binary tree. Now, similarly, we have to calculate the same process for N3. We did it for N1. We did it for N2. So for N3, this is the left subtree and this is the right subtree. We don't have anything on to the left. So height is going to be minus one. So for a tree which does not have any node, the height is minus one and this is left subtree and this is right subtree for N3 and for right subtree, you can see we have node N6, which is going to act as the root node and we don't have any further children. So height is going to be zero. So again, LST minus RST equals to minus one minus zero, which is going to be minus one and we have to take or remove the minus sign. So we are again getting one, which is not greater than K equals to one. It is equal to one, but not greater than that. So still we can see this binary tree is balanced. Similarly, we will do this entire process for N4 and N5. So for N4, we don't have anything left and right. So LST minus RST over here is going to be minus one, minus, minus one. 
so it's going to be ultimately going to be zero for n5 again it would be one for n6 again you do the same calculation it would be zero okay so after performing this entire calculation of difference between the height of left and right subtree for every node we found out that the value that is the difference was never greater than one and hence we can say that this binary tree diagram one is balanced okay now of course we want to still talk about why balancing is required and we will do that in two minutes but let's come to diagram two and let's do the same calculation again so for n1 that is for the first node which is the root node this is the left subtree correct lst and this is the right subtree rst so let's calculate the height of the left subtree for left subtree n2 is going to be the root node and the height is the largest or longest path which is 1 and 2 to the leaf node n7 so lst equals to 2 that is the height of the left subtree equals to 2 for the height of rst we do not have anything on the left and right of n3 which is root for this right subtree so the height is going to be 0 now here when you take the difference of lst minus rst you get 2 minus 0 which is going to be equal to 2 now according to our definition a binary tree is called balanced binary tree if the difference between the height of left and right subtree for every node is not more than k which is equal to 1 so when k equals to 1 and when we are getting a difference of 2 that is the difference of height between left and right subtree is greater than 1 this proves or this means that this binary tree diagram 2 is unbalanced or is not balanced okay so this is unbalanced i don't know if unbalanced is even a word imbalanced i don't know let's call it not balanced okay so this is not balanced all right so we straight away got two with the very first calculation sometimes what will happen is you will have to find out or you will have to calculate this difference for other nodes also maybe for the first root node you will get the difference under one or equal to one but for other nodes or inner nodes or lower nodes you might get the difference which is more than one okay over here we got it in the very first calculation itself but that may not be the case every time okay so now that you've understood how to find out whether a tree a binary tree or a binary search tree is balanced or not the next obvious question is why do we need it so let's talk about the question why and try to answer it it is very very important so pay attention so again we have two diagrams this is binary tree diagram one and this is binary tree diagram 2 and believe it or not even though this looks like a linked list a singly linked list it is actually falling in the definition of a binary tree so according to the binary tree definition it is nothing but nodes which are linked and every node can have 0 1 or 2 children so if you take this node n4 and consider it as the root it has one right child it does not have a left child and that is valid for a binary tree right a binary tree can have one two or zero children even this node has one child and it does not have a left child so for all nodes in this binary tree all of them are having only right child right okay and another thing is both these binary tree diagrams are binary search trees the reason being for every node let's say in tree diagram one for node n1 the value 35 the left child is smaller that is 21 is smaller than 35 and right child n3 is greater than 35 similarly for n2 which is 21 the left child is 13 which is less than 21 the right child is 29 which is greater than 21 and all the values in this left subtree for n1 all these values 21 13 29 are again smaller than 35 because they lie to the left and that is the whole principle whole rule for a valid binary search tree okay similarly for the right hand side also you can see for n1 in the right subtree we have 48 and 79 48 and 79 both of them are greater than 35 for n3 we do not have a left child but we have a right child 79 which is greater than 48 all right and if you observe the tree diagram 2 also even this is a binary search tree because you can see the values are increasing in order 13 21 29 35 
48 and 79 and all of them are the right child. So for root n4, we do not have a left child but we have a right child 21 and 21 is greater than 13. Similarly for n2, we have a right child n5 which has 29 which is greater than 21. For n5, we have a right child n1 which is 35 so 35 is greater than 29. Okay. And that trend follows, hence we can see that both of them are valid binary trees and both of them are valid binary search trees. Okay, so now that we've understood this, both of these tree diagrams have six nodes from N1 to N6. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Similarly, in this tree diagram, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And both of these tree diagrams also have the same values. So we have N1 as 35, over here also we have N1 as 35, we have N2 as 21, we have N2 as 21 and so on. Just that the placement of these nodes is different because the structure is different, right? But we have the same values, we have the same number of nodes. Okay, so now that we've got a hang of the situation, the scenario, at the bottom of both of these trees, I have given a time complexity value where we've said average case is O of log N and worst case is O of n. Now we've already derived these values in previous tutorials. So we are simply gonna talk about which is better and which is not. And of course the worst case O of n is linear time, which is the worst case scenario. And this is logarithmic time, which is the best case scenario. But what do I mean by worst case and best case? All right. So imagine, let's say you want to find out a value V equals to 79 in both these tree diagrams. So let's talk about tree diagram 1. You will of course start searching from the root node. So root node n1, you will come to n1, you will compare 35 and you will see is 35 equal to 79? No, it is not. And since 79 is greater than 35, you will not go to the left, right? You will not go to the left, you will directly jump to the right. Okay, so first hop, then you will come to n3, you will check the value 48, is it equal equal to 79? No. So 79 is greater than 48. So you'll jump to N6, which is to the right side of N3 because 79 is of course greater than 48. And in binary search tree, we know the arrangement is such that the larger values are towards the right. So when you come at N6, you'll again compare 79 with the value that you want to search, which is also 79. So you'll get a match. And this is where you got a match. And the number of hops that were required are two, correct? So two hops were required to get the value 79. So in this tree diagram one, no matter where the value lies, the maximum number of hops that are required to find a particular value is always going to be two. That is because 79 was at the bottom most level at the leaf level and it still required only two hops to reach it. So all the other nodes will also require own maximum two hops. So let's say you want to find out the value v equals to 29. So 29 is again over here. So you will come, you will check is 35 equal equal to 29? No. And 29 is smaller. So you will jump from N1 to N2 because 29 is smaller than 35. Now you will check the value of 21. Is it equal equal to 29? No. But 29 is greater than 21. So from N2 you will jump to N5 and not N4 because you have to jump to the right because 29 is greater. The value that you are looking for is greater than the current value. You'll come over here and again you'll get the match of 29. And again, you can see you card one and second, so two hops. All right. Now come to the tree diagram two. And let's say now over here also, you're searching for the value 79. So again, you're looking for V equals to 79. You'll start with the root node, of course. You'll check 13. Is 13 matching 79? No. So you'll go to the right because 79 is greater than 13. So you'll jump to N2. N2's value 21 is also not matching with 79. And since 79 is greater, you'll jump to N5. Now similarly, you'll keep on jumping and ultimately you'll land with N6. So here you can see the number of hops required was 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Right? So the hops required was equal to 5. So you can see clearly that the searching in tree diagram one is much more faster because let's say for one hop, programmatically speaking, let's say from going from one node to another node, let's say the time taken is equal to 
वन माइक्रोसेकेंड ओके वी आर जस्ट मेकिंग सम अजम्पन दीज आर नॉट रियल वैल्यूज सो इन द बाइनरी टेलीग्राम वन टू फाइंड सेवेंटी नाइन वी रिक्वायर टू हॉप्स विच मीन्स दैट इट वुड रिक्वायर टू माइक्रो सेकेंड्स करेक्ट वेर एज इन बाइनरी ट्री डायग्राम टू वी रिक्वायर्ड फाइव हॉप्स सो वी वुड रिक्वायर फाइव माइक्रो सेकेंड्स टू रीच एन सिक्स विच इज हैविंग अ वैल्यू ऑफ सेवेंटी नाइन नाउ आई नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू माइक्रो सेकेंड्स एंड फाइव माइक्रो सेकेंड्स इज नॉट अ लॉट बट कंसिडर अ ट्री डायग्राम विच हैज हंड्रेड थाउजेंड नोट्स ओके नाउ इन दैट केस इन द वर्स्ट केस सिनारियो If you want to find out a particular value, this formula will be much more efficient compared to this formula. And by how much? Let's jump to the Google Chrome and try to calculate these values. So n is nothing but the sample size or the size of the binary tree, which is the number of nodes. Let's say the number of nodes that we want to calculate these values for is n equals to hundred thousand. Okay, which means we are assuming that Our binary tree diagram one has hundred thousand nodes, and over here also n is equal to hundred thousand. And we want to find out the average time taken to find a particular value. Now tree diagram one is completely balanced. We are assuming all the hundred thousand nodes are balanced, and over here we have this linear kind of structure where n seven is over here, n eight is over here in a single line in a linear way. Okay. Which is the worst case? So let's jump to the Google Chrome browser and calculate these values. So when it comes to the worst case scenario, where n equals to hundred thousand, the calculation is pretty basic because it is linear. So as n increases, the worst case time also increases. So if n is equal to hundred thousand, the worst case time required will also be equal to hundred thousand microseconds, provided that One hop from one node to another node, one hop takes one microsecond. So this is an assumption that we are doing. You can take it anything. Let's say it is one second or one nanosecond or one millisecond. We are taking one microsecond. So one hop takes one microsecond. So hundred hops in the worst case scenario will take hundred microseconds. So for the average case, we need to calculate log of hundred thousand. Now this is log to the base two. Okay, and we need to calculate this value. So let's calculate this. Coming to the Chrome browser, if you just say log two, and then put hundred thousand, and hit enter, you can see the value is sixteen point sixty. So this is equal to sixteen point sixty microseconds, and now you can see the difference. This is sixteen point sixty microseconds, and this is hundred thousand microseconds. So you can see the enormous difference in time. If in case this was in seconds, that is, if one hop was taking one second, then you would have to wait hundred thousand seconds to find a particular node, and you would only have to wait sixteen seconds to find that same particular node in this tree diagram. So now you can see the enormous difference in time efficiency of log n and O of n, so linear time is worst case scenario, and we completely want to avoid that. Hence, we usually prefer a balanced binary search tree, and that is the only way to guarantee the searching operation is very fast, and that it follows this log n behavior. Okay, and hence balancing a binary search tree is one of the most important task when you are dealing in real time data where the data is of large size, and where searching is very very important. now how you do the balancing has different ways different methodologies and we have for the sub types of binary search tree for example avl tree is a balanced binary search tree which does this balancing by performing some rotations and we'll talk about the different techniques and algorithms that are required and that are used to convert a unbalanced tree into a balanced tree by doing these different algorithmic steps and rotations we'll see that in further tutorials but understanding what is the concept of balancing and why we need it is absolutely important and i hope i have answered why we need it the biggest reason is the efficiency and time optimization a unbalanced tree is always going to perform worst when it comes to time and a balanced tree will be the most optimized and fastest when it comes to different operations all right so that's why we need balancing
Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this video over here. I hope you've understood what is balancing and why we need it. If you've understood this entire video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. It is absolutely important. You might be asked this question in in your interviews, as in what is balancing and why we need it. Definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications, as in further videos we are gonna take a look at different types and how the balancing is done in very detail. So you'll get notified whenever I upload those videos. And let me know in the comments how this video was. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.